Hey house guests, welcome to today's Big Brother Over the Top updates and spoilers. Our house guest of the day is Devin Veering, and it's Devin's 16th birthday. Yay! Happy Sweet 16. You just so happened to share a birthday with our lovely Lucy over there. So happy birthday to both of you guys. And Devin wants to know, who do I think will make it further out of the sisters, Alex or Morgan? That's a great question. I think that Alex is more strategic, but I think that she's made more enemies so far than Morgan. So I think that Morgan has the potential to slide pretty far through this game, uh, whereas Alex is going to be a bigger target. But... You know what? I think I'm like really impressed that the sisters haven't blown the whole sister cover yet. That's crazy. But let me know in the comments who you guys think is going to make it further into the game. All right, so let's talk about what's going on because it's a lot. So yesterday, Big Brother restocked the pantry, and there are a lot of petty baddies running around. Jason, Danielle, and Shane, again, grabbed all the chocolates. They ripped open that bag and took away all the crackle bars. They took them away and hid them in the lounge room so that Shelby could not enjoy them. But Shelby is well aware of what they've done, and Whitney was like, the best thing that you can do is um, pretend that you didn't notice what they did. <laughs> And Shelby's like, whatever, I'm not going to eat the chocolate, so I'm going to slim down and it's going to add fuel to the fire on Jason's face and the cottage cheese on Danielle's ass. Damn, a savage AF. All right, so then a little while later, it was time for the live Q&A with Julie. And I mean, the questions weren't that exciting, but the best part was when Julie smacked Justin down. He kept calling her baby. And she was like, um, for the record, only my husband calls me baby. And then two seconds later, Neely called her boo. And Julie said, and that's what I call my husband. <laughs> Okay, so then the house gets started outside lockdown and Shelby and Scott were chatting on the hammock and they're both really glad that Justin has kind of been bridging the gap between the two sides and hanging out with them some more and they're thinking maybe like we're going to be able to pull him in at some point, get him to come over to our side. Uh, they also feel like Justin wants to break up the showman so they're thinking like maybe he'll vote with us this week maybe possibly we'll see uh and then scott was teasing again that he's going to be blowing up shane's game with his nomination speech again i'm assuming he means he's going to out the whole four guy alliance that was made on the first night i don't think it's going to be as explosive as he's hoping but sure scott so then this was really weird. The feeds like cut to fish for a little while yesterday and it was just like what are fish? Like what is this? Because like we've barely seen them all season. Um, but they were still on their outside lockdown and there was like music playing in the distance so they had no choice. They had to like turn off the feeds for a little while. So then Scott and Neely were chatting in the HOH room. Excuse me. And <laughs> Scott is trying to smooth things over for Alex because we know that Neely was really pissed last week when Alex put up Chrissy as the replacement nominee. So he's like, oh, Alex didn't want to put up Chrissy. It was like a last ditch effort to save Monty. So then Neely's like, yeah, I understand. I understand. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and Scott's saying, like, I want to do a one week deal with you. Like, I'll keep you safe this week. And then if you win HOH next week, uh, if you could, like, keep me and Alex safe, that'd be cool. And Neely's like, that sounds reasonable, but I want to talk to Alex first before I commit to this. We'll come back to that. All right, so the Plastic slash Ball Smashers decided last night they're tired of this crackle gate. They're going to, like, find these freaking chocolate bars. So they go on a hunt for them. Whitney was like, I saw Jason running with a bag of chocolates earlier. So they know, you know, there's some shady stuff going on here. So Morgan and Whitney, a few minutes later, find them in the lounge room. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we found them. And they stash them in Shelby's golf bag. They're talking about how they're going to get back at the others. Maybe, like, put the wrappers back in the spot where the chocolates were hidden so that they find them. And they're just like, what the F? Um, I don't know. It was pretty funny, though. So then it's time for Neely and Alex to talk. So Morgan was also there. They were all in the have not room, AKA Morgan's lair. <laughs> She's the only have not right now. So Alex is like, I just wanted to explain what happened last week and really clear the air with you. Um, so she's like, I had been considering nominating Scott as a replacement nominee and then you guys all came up to the HOH and like proposed your deal of like, put up Scott, we'll get rid of him and you'll be safe next week. 
So Alex is like, that was all fine and dandy, but then Shane told someone on our side that you guys were lying and you are going to vote out Monty anyway. So she knew, like, if Monty was going, she didn't want to put up Scott and, like, burn that bridge with him. And she felt bad last week because he was, like, in the sand trap and on the outs with everybody. So she was like, I knew Chrissy would be safe, and uh, that's why I did what I did. So then Neely's like, yeah... I knew about that plan. Um, but she was like, I didn't really have a problem with Monty, so I was really on the fence with that whole plan. And she said what really put it over the top was when Monty could not keep his mouth shut, and she was just like, all right, I'm voting you out. So they kind of clear the air. I don't know if they're going to go through with this deal or not with Scott. It seems like they want to. Uh, I mean, it really rests on Neely if she's going to go through with it because I think Alex and Scott are like, yeah, let's do it. Um, but they agree. They want to bridge that divide in the house because it's been very divided. And uh, they hug it out. Okay, so at midnight last night, the house gets off saying happy birthday to Whitney, except for, like, Scott and Justin. They missed it. I can't believe Whitney's only 22. That's crazy. Um, but then they were, like, blowing up condom balloons and decorating them. Sure. I mean, there's nothing else really they could do, so why not? All right. So then, this is where things start getting pretty crazy. So Justin went outside and joined the late night jamboree in the backyard at one point, and Jason was like, uh, so how does your butt feel with all those girls kissing it? And he's referring to the plastics or the ball smashers because they've been spending a lot more time with Justin. So Justin's like, uh, what are you talking about? I've just been chilling with them. It's like really awkward right now with Justin and the rest of this late night jamboree group. So he's like, yeah, before I couldn't really hang out with them because Monty was always with them. Monty sucked. But now that he's gone, like we have fun together. And he's like, we don't talk any game. You guys know that my heart is with the late night jamboree. So just chill. They're not kissing my ass. And Neely was like, oh, you're sweet. Meaning like naive. Because they're all saying like these girls are using you for your vote. So then Justin goes up to the HOH room and talks to Scott. And he's like, freaking, yo, Scott, these people outside right now are telling me that the girls are just kissing my ass, and I don't like that. So Scott's like, no, like they genuinely like you. They enjoy spending time with you. So then Justin, he's feeling good about this thing with Scott right now. So he starts spilling some info. He's like, I don't trust Shane or Danielle one bit. They're always going to save each other first, so, like, why should I look out for them? And Scott's just like, yeah. <laughs> so then, Justin also lets Scott know that if Shane and Danielle won HOH, they would target Scott and Alex. I mean, that's pretty much a given, but, I mean, it's kind of a big deal when you actually say it out loud. So, Justin leaves, and Scott's just like, yes. Yes, yes, because he feels that Justin is moving closer to his group and that maybe he would vote out either Shane or Danielle this week. So then there's more drama with Justin and the late night jamboree. They were talking about how Justin would be a great dad one day. It was like a nice thing. But then Justin was like, yeah, I planted some seeds before I left. Uh, I'm hoping to go home to like three pregnant women. <laughs> what? And Danielle and Neely are just like, no, that's not cool. You're being selfish. Like, you would not be able to give all those children enough attention, especially if it's with, like, three mothers, because they're not going to, it's going to be, like, weird. And <sighs> this was an awkward conversation. So then the cameras switched for a little while, because they were talking about, like, personal stuff. And during that time when the cameras were not on them, Justin made some sort of comment about the father of Danielle's son. Um, there's been some speculation that maybe it was about, like, child support or something. I don't know. But when the feeds came back to them, she was really upset. Justin was apologizing over and over again. Uh, he also apologized to Neely, and she was like, I don't freaking care. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It was just, like, it's really showing the tension within this group. So then Chrissy was like, this was an uncomfortable subject that we should never bring up again. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this morning, Neely decided to spill the beans to Jason and Chrissy separately uh, about her th the deal that Scott brought to her uh, about keeping Scott and Alex safe if she wins the next HOH, you know, in return for her safety this week. So Neely's like, yeah, it sounds good, but I want to make sure that this would mean safety for me, Chrissy, and Jason. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal. I mean, I think Scott was planning on that anyway, but 
plans change. Check it out. So America's Care Package arrived today, and it was for Scott. So we got some tidy whitey underwears. <laughs> we got jelly beans. And of course, the pick a veto power, which we were all voting on. So he, this week, is going to get get to choose which type of veto everyone will be playing for. Like the card said, he does not win the veto automatically. He's just picking what they're competing for. So he's going to have to decide before the competition. Uh, it's either going to be a diamond POV, which means that the person who wins also gets to pick their placement nominee if they use it. A uh, double POV, which means two people will win. Or a boomerang boomerang POV, which means that the veto can be used twice this week crazy so initially Scott's like yeah I'm pretty sure I already know which one I want to do the diamond POV so then Scott was talking to Whitney in the bathroom area and he realized I don't want to pick diamond POV <laughs> definitely not because that would mean that the other side would be able to potentially pick the replacement nominee and he's really worried that it would be Alex he does not want Alex to go home especially not on his HOH so he's like diamond POV is out then he decides he's pretty sure he wants to use the double POV, but he does not want to stick with his initial nominees of Danielle and Shane. He's thinking, I'm going to put up two pawns, meaning Chrissy and Neely. He's going to have to take back that uh, deal proposal, and his targets are still going to be Shane and Danielle. He's assuming that the vetoes will be used, or at least one of them. And uh, he'll be able to get rid of either Shane or Danielle. I think his main target is still Shane, but I'm sure he'd be happy either way. So Scott's telling his people about his new plan. They like it. Uh, and then, I mean, other than that, have-nots will be revealed tomorrow. And the first safety ceremony. And there's, like, one other thing that's really uh, bothering me. So Danielle was telling this story last night about how she got a puppy... Uh, and like the puppy wasn't eating its food and she couldn't afford to take it to the vet or like buy that food. Um, so she like let it starve to death. It was really not good. Um, I mean, again, we don't know the exact circumstances of what happened. Um, it's just, uh, you guys can read the full transcript of what uh, this story was all about on Joker's updates, but it's just like leaving a really bad taste in my mouth, and mm -mm. <laughs> I can't root for Danielle anymore, but let me know what you guys think, and uh, yeah, until tomorrow, much love.